I actually never wanted to run for office. <laughs> I, um, you know, for my 20 year career, I've always been a staff. I've worked in political organizing and community organizing and in the labor movement for 20 years around political issues and legislation and campaigns. But I was always very happy to be in the background. Um, I was staff for a legislator at the county level. And, you know, I was happy to do the research and write talking points and, and help with, you know, prepping people for media conversations and then not being that person out in front. Um, but, you know, as my career went on and I think I got pushed out in front more and more, um, you know, there really was an opportunity in this district and it seemed like after COVID, it was such an important time to step up. Um, and, you know, it's, I've dedicated my career to fighting for people, you know, struggling to make ends meet. I actually originally wanted to work with kids and youth and found that changing the economics of their family is actually the best way you can help kids. And so that's what I dedicated my career to doing. Um, and now, you know, to be able to be a legislator and have the kind of impact uh, that you can have at the statewide level is just so exciting. And so I've really been loving it, uh, despite avoiding running for office for 20 years. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, I think women who are thinking about running for office definitely have to take it seriously, um, making that choice. It was, a, it was a very hard choice. I actually had to quit my job to run for office, which was incredibly scary as a single mom. And uh, I sat down and had a conversation with my daughter and I was like, look, we're going to be making some serious sacrifices <laughs> this year and had to really get her commitment and other family and friends around us um, that I knew I would need support from. And so it really does take a village. And then once you get elected, there is a lot of cost then too. A lot of people, you know, myself included, uh, in the legislature have taken pay cuts to do this job. Um, there's no pension or retirement and coming out of the labor movement, that was also scary. And especially as a single mom, you know, I want to be able to make sure that I'm going to be okay in my retirement and not a, a burden on my daughter. And so, um, and then, you know, flying her up with me because I bring her up with me every week. And so that's an additional cost too. Um, there are a lot of additional costs that you really don't think about or know about. It's not a job that's made for parents or single moms. Uh, I know they've, you know, made some efforts to make some changes. The, the Monday session was pushed back to later so that a lot of the parents could take their kids to school in the morning and jump on a plane and be here in time for session, which I think was a really nice adjustment. Um, but you know, it's a it's an old institution that was built by men and not really thought of. You know, women and childcare. I know a lot of the moms who do this work do not go to the events in the evening. You know, it's which is an opportunity to you know, network and, and strategize and move things forward. And uh, a lot of moms don't do that because they need to be home with their kids. So, um, and I know dads who are flying back and forth every single day to see their family. So, you know, I, I really respect everyone in the legislature. I know everyone in their own way is making a huge sacrifice for this work and to do this work and make sure that we're really delivering on important issues for our community. But it is, I think, something that you have to really think seriously about and, and consider all of the adjustments that you're gonna to have to make in your life. And when, you know, I moved my daughter up here in the middle of the school year, that was a way more challenging than I could have imagined. Um, I actually had to take her out of the school because it was not working out and then couldn't find a school that would take her. There was no room for her. And so now she's doing virtual school in my office many days while I'm in meetings. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, there are unexpected bumps in the road and you just have to, you know, be willing and able to, to roll with it. And, um, and have a support network around you to help support you as well, because it's, it's something that you can't do on your own. Um, the Women in California Politics Museum was, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and my daughter was there with me, and so we had a really nice time just looking around at all of the amazing history of women who have been in the legislature. And, you know, seeing these, these things that we, you know, think of as an everyday thing, seeing the women who passed those, right? Like the call box, um, one of the founders, Sunny, who founded the, helped found the museum, she's the legislator who passed the call box on the highway 
And um, so, you know, back before cell phones, that was a really important resource that we really needed. And so the history was uh, really exciting to see. My daughter, of course, really loved seeing the, um, the display about getting rid of corporal punishment in schools and the very big paddle that was on display there. She was in shock that that was ever used on kids. So there's a lot of important history and, and things that have really changed kids and families' lives. And I think it just goes to the fact that, you know, making sure that we have women in the legislature and crafting the laws that are going to impact people's lives is so important because, you know, we bring, all of us bring really unique experiences with us and being a mom and a parent, um, being a woman in a society that hasn't been set up to support you, you know, those are important perspectives to have and to bring to the legislature. And I feel like, you know, being a part of this moment in history where we have 50, we have a quarter of the women who have ever served in the legislature are serving right now. It's a really exciting moment to be there. There's a lot of energy and excitement around moving forward an agenda for women and families. And it's just a really exciting time to be a part of that. It's been a really exciting time to be here right now as part of Women's History Month and part of a, a new class that is making history in the legislature to be you know, the first time that we've gotten to 50 women in the legislature. There's a lot of you know, celebration and excitement about that. And also I think a lot of um, motivation to make sure we use that power to do good work and to make a difference in people's lives. And so really coming together as a unit and as a women's caucus has been an important thing that we've been uh, working really hard on this year. We're working on you know, priority bills to address childcare, healthcare, you know, reproductive rights, you know, pressing issues that we're facing right now in this time. And so it's such a just exciting and interesting time to be a part of that and um, and to be able to you know push that button and be able to vote on those bills and really know that you're able to to make that happen is a really exciting opportunity well thank you for joining us thank you this is so fun <laughs>